So we're going to break this down. And when we break this down, we're basically saying, how many things underneath the radical sign can I find that were multiplied by themselves that I can divide out? I'm basically doing the opposite. And this is going to relate to you guys finding prime factors the other day with Miss Bryant. She said you liked the birthday cake method, did you? I like the other method. I like the birthday cake method. So first step here, find the prime factorization of the radicand. So we have to find the prime factorization of 200 and of x squared, y to third, and z squared. Let's start with the 200. What can I divide 200 by that's prime? And I'm not finished until I get that one at the base. So the prime factorization of 200 And I'm going to end up writing this radical read written really long. I'm going to take all of these numbers that I found are its prime factors, and I'm going to rewrite them inside of here. And then I'm going to break up the variables. How many x's do I have? One. I will have one when I pull it out. You're a step ahead of me. How many y's do I have? And Z's? Two. So when I'm going to factor this, or, or find the, um, the prime factorization, that's this first step. I've taken the number that was in there, and I broke it down to its prime factors. And I took the variables, and I wrote them out based on what their variable's exponent was. Does that make sense so far? Step two. The index of the radical tells you what size of identical groups can be removed from the radicand. Circle these groups. Well, we don't have an index here. That means that the index is what? Two. That means I'm going to circle groups of two. Not everything's going to get circled because they don't all have a match. So I can circle two here, but that two's left. I'm circling them in groups of twos because the index was two. So for each circled group, I'm reading the directions here again, for each circled group the number of variable will be multiplied by the coefficient of the radical one time. I'm basically pulling these groups out and they're going to go in front of the radical and become the coefficient. So 2 times 5 gives me what? 10. Ten. And then I get 1x, one 1y, one and 1z. And then I have to throw that radical sign back up and whatever didn't get circled stays inside. They're trapped there because they don't have a partner. They die. They're not dead. They're in there swimming around. They're Ew. happy as clams. Do clams swim? I don't know. There's a two left. They just have a really short life. And there's a Y left. So when I come back up here, this original equals 10XYZ to the radical of 2Y. And it's okay to still be Mm-hmm. Let's do uh, I think we'll leave it there. What are we not understanding? I understand everything. I am a fountain of knowledge. That's scary. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make one up. Um let's say Twelve, four, 
Okay, so our index is three. That's going to be important later, but the first thing we have to do is find the prime factorization of 90. So off to the side, find the prime factorization of 90. This is because I made it up. The 90 is going to get stuck. It doesn't get to leave. 490. All by itself. Wait, that's a really long time. x to the fifth power is the same as saying x times x times x times x times x. I should have been more thoughtful in the number I made up because I can't take out the 90 at all. There's no factors, prime factors of the 90 that break into threes, right? There's no three times three times three or two times two times two. So the 90 stays. But I do have three x's and three y's. Oh my. And what's going to happen with the z's? Uh, you didn't sleep. There's two of them. Special. Two groups of z. So all that gets pulled out of this one is going to end up being parts variables. of the variables, right? So this is going to equal x, y, z to the second power times 90 x squared um, y. That's a lot of words and numbers. There are no words that, that you say. There's a lot of words you say. Who feels like your brain has had a little too much workout for Monday morning? Yeah. Are we following the steps? I will be honest. feel like if I could practice some more, I'd probably begin to understand this better. Is that where we're at right now? Yes. Okay. Now we should That's what tomorrow's going to be. Tomorrow's going to be some more guided practice and independent practice. Here's what I want you to think about right now with our last few minutes of class. Go back to the essential question. How do I simplify radicals beyond square roots? That's what we're doing back here. And I would like you to add in your summary a little bit of where you're at right now. Down in the summary. 